name just for you to know that my name is Jennifer. I am from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and Shelly has uh, kindly invited me to give this webinar today. For me, it's uh, such an honor and such a pleasure to be here. This is not my first uh, webinar for American CISO. And the topic that I chose today that I would like to share with all of you is digital skills for 21st century teachers. And uh, as I'm on holidays, I thought that it was very nice to go through some of the things that I really thought that teachers should master if they're planning to start integrating technology in their classroom. So I thought that the agenda for today is, okay, first of all, how to become a better searcher. Um, these are the basic skills that I truly believe that we all should know and that we haven't been taught these skills, not at least here in, in Argentina. Um, how to create and use digital audio. And this idea of using images, this idea of bringing into the classroom uh, visual literacies, and obviously something that I truly find that is so important for this new generation is bringing games and using online games to motivate our students and to also use games to assess our students in a totally different way. And then I'm going to show you how I am teaching prepositions with uh, games. So let me start off by asking all of you a question. These are all different search engines. Any of you know these search engines? Any idea? Have you ever used them? Let's see if you can use the chat to help me out. Can you all listen to me? You know ask. Good. You know them. Good. Google? Which one is the Google one? Any idea? Okay, for example, if I tell you, if you have to look for information, even your students, they have to look for information, the first thing we do as teachers, we always look in Google, or even our students look everything through Google. And my piece of advice is there is a very nice search engine that is called kidrex.org. This is the first image you see here. And this is, this is definitely the search engine that we should all be teaching our students to use. And why? Because there are no ads. And Google uses a specific safe search, okay, for our students, where automatically Google is uh, uh, preventing any type of situation when our students are working online. Okay, so remember, kidrex.org is definitely the uh, search engine that we have to start using with our students. And then we have Bollify. Any idea what is Bollify? Have you ever heard about this other uh, search engine? This, maybe you would use this one for young learners. Oh, you knew about it, but you never used it. Okay, good. Well, Bollify, what it does, it refines your search by adding different pieces. Okay, so Bollify automatically teaches your students, okay, let's search, for example, for technology. Okay, and then they add different specific words, but not, okay, mobile phones, for example. So this is a very nice tool. Don't worry about all uh, the links that I'm going to share uh, today. Yes, you have them all in my blog, then at the end, you will have uh, the address where you can have access to all these links, okay? Just now, please try to use the chat or any questions you have, please feel free to ask, okay? So Bollify is a very nice search engine also that we should start uh, using in the classroom. And then ask, some, some of you here told me you use ask with your students. What's the difference between using ask and for example, using Google, okay? There is a, a big difference because Google, what it does is to index the information. And in this case, okay, uh, ASK is designed exclusively for young learners of the ages of 6 to 12 years old. Again, if they want to ask a question, this is what definitely, at least my students, what they do is always ask a question. They don't want to index the questions, but they want to ask questions. What the, definitely the best search engine is ASK. Okay, ASK Kids, this is from uh, Yahoo. And then there is another one that I think that most of you, maybe you never heard about it, that it's called Yippee. Any idea what's Yippee? Well, KidRex is, is for older students, and ASK you can use the students until they're 12 years old. And Yippee is definitely one that you can use for older students. Uh, Maria34, yes, you can use this one, okay? Well, what it does, it helps you to see your search engines, okay, by topic. Exclusive, yes, only by topic, okay? And all the different searches that you do are gathered in clusters. This is another very nice search engine that is something different for our students, and bear in mind that they're also several visual search engines, 
And uh, these are very important to bring them into the classroom. And the idea of, inter of showing you this today is because I truly believe that there is a literacy that we have not been taught as teachers. And this literacy is called, okay, information literacy. Okay, we need to know how to filter information. And this is the type of 21st century skills that we have to start teaching our students. Let's go to the next one. Have you ever heard about Google Fight? Any idea what is Google Fight? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you how I use Google Fight. Um, I use it on a, on a per personally and also with my students. In general, what, what Google Fight does, it's, it's, a, it's very simple. What it does is you put two words and then uh, you have to, then Google automatically will search online, okay, this term, how many times it has been used online. For example, if I have a question as a teacher, for example, if I say, do we say in the internet or on the internet? So I go to Google Fight. And then I click make a fight and automatically, okay, Google will index all the different information on how many times people posted on the internet or on the internet. Okay, as you can see, it's not, I think it's not so clear here, but definitely it's on the internet. As, as you can see, okay, the graphic over here is a lot more than if we say in the internet. So this is a very nice tool that I use it, for example, a lot with preposition. It's on the table or it's in the table. So feel free to use this website, and it's very motivating for our students to use it. Advantage and disadvantage, obviously you need to have internet access uh, at school to be able to do this. But if you don't have internet access at school, my piece of advice, please give them these links to use them after school if they have access at home. And then something very important that I thought about and to share with you today is this idea of using audio. Okay, we have to know how to work and create different types of audios. Uh, Vocaroo is really the simplest one, the one uh, that you don't have to have an email account to open it. And it is as simple as, as the images you see here. You just click where it says record. You record a message. And after you record the message, you can send this me message via email. And I'm going to tell you how I'm using Vocaroo with my students. Um, I teach language. And at school, I don't have uh, internet. So after school, what they're doing, they are explaining to everybody the different rules. Okay, it's, very, it's very similar, exactly, Maria to Mailbox, it's quite similar. They're explaining the different games that are going to participate now on the Olympics. And this is wonderful. Obviously, um, every week they have been uh, sharing the different rules. I use a specific website that is English for the Games, for example. That with this online uh, website, they have all the different information and they post the rules of the different games using Vocaro. Instead of doing something written, obviously, this is a very simple tool to start using uh, digital audio in the classroom. And then, for other students, for young learners, different things that we can do is monk yourself. This, I, I took this image. I have an online space that I've invited the parents to participate as well as uh, all my students. And they have a lot of different websites that they can choose from. And these are the two that young learners really enjoy. And what, what can they do with these two different websites? In the first one that is Monk Yourself, they have to create an avatar. And in this avatar, what they have to do is they have to write some text, and this, this text is converted into audio. So this is a very nice tool to make them practice. Okay? The other tool that my students really enjoy uh, using is Talking Pets. We did an activity on different animals. And what I wanted them to do, really, is I wanted them to bring, okay, their dog or their cat into a virtual environment. And with Talking Pets, pets this, is, uh, this is possible. I mean, in a very, very simple way, you have to join the space, and then you have to you create an avatar, you dress your own pet, and then you give life to your avatar just by giving, writing some text. They can also use a microphone, and they can record their own voices. So this is really something really, really nice, and some very simple ways in how, how to motivate our students in a totally different way, OK? Yeah, this is different skills that we can, uh, OK, work with. And then this idea of using visual literacy is so important nowadays. This is one of my favorite websites, OK? And I try to motivate my students using this website. It's called Monoface. And what is Monoface? OK, Monoface, would, how do I use this website? If you click on the different faces, automatically the face will be totally different. 
okay, the hair, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Everything will change. So we can use the space in different ways, okay? For example, first of all, you can teach them parts of the face and then different adjectives. They go into this website and then tell me, okay, how are you feeling today? Could you please tell me how you're feeling? And this is really wonderful because they get highly motivated in using visual literacy in the classroom. But bear something in mind, please. When they're using these type of tools in the classroom, they get highly motivated with the game part of creating their own image on how they're feeling. And please, time the activity. Okay, tell them, okay, please, you have not more than five minutes to create, okay, a face that is going to reflect how you're feeling today. And another tool that I use a lot also to motivate my students to use visual literacies is Learning Chocolate. Learning Chocolate, I think, is one of the best websites to teach them. And this is not only for young learners. Here, maybe I put an image here where you can see young learners. But you, you, can, you can adapt this to also children until they're 16, some maybe 18 years old, depending if they're native speakers. No, but yes, in Argentina. Where this is one of the best websites where all the students they learn vocabulary, okay? It's a, it's a visual website where they're learning vocabulary. But not only vocabulary, you already have ready-made uh, matching activities, okay? Fill in the gaps. You even have a dictation, all ready-made, okay, that you can use with your students. And I match this, for example, with other different things. It's a beautiful website. You're going to really fall in love with this website. The thing is, my idea is, okay, we can use this website, but together with, with this website, okay, you can also use Vocaroo, the one that I, I told you before, because this is what the website is lacking, this idea of the speaking skill, okay? So add them. Maybe they can work with this website, and then later on they can describe or name which were the different, uh, you know, vocabulary that they learned. What I also like a lot about this website is that, uh, as you can see, you have the image. Below the image, you have, uh, okay, you can read it, Okay, the name of the animal, and then you have the sound. So that's something really very, very important, at least for my students. And how do I use this website? Again, if I don't have internet access at school, what I do is, um, well, they can work with this, this vocabulary after school as well. And another website that I use also uh, to explore this idea of visual literacy is Five Card Flickr. Any idea somebody here what is Flickr or what's the use of Flickr? Do you use Flickr? I'm sure Maria knows. <laughs> okay. Good, perfect. It's pictures, okay? It's one of the biggest websites that you use where what you share are pictures, okay? It's like Picasa, but it's like the online version of, of Picasso, for example, okay? Just for all of you to have an idea. Now, I use this website. This is a very nice website if you want to motivate your students to start writing using visual literacy. And how does this work? What you do is, okay, the software itself will give your students an option. They have to choose these five, can you see the five images on the screen? So your students choose one image, okay? They have to then, from these images, okay, they have to start creating a story, okay? Now they have to choose five different images. This is very motivating because obviously, once again, the visual stimuli allows them to write a lot better. And this has really given me excellent results. So I highly recommend you to start using this website if you can with your students. And now, um, yes, it's a, exactly. It's, it's quite similar to Petra Flickr, exactly. And then I want to show you some uh, specific things about using games. I truly believe that our students are the gaming generation. And we definitely have to use games and see their pedagogical purpose in the classroom. And I like this quote for, from Armando Baltra that he has said, what makes computer games fun can offer an interesting new light on what will motivate a student to learn. Now here again, this is our job as a teacher to find a suitable game that will, okay, uh, motivate a student, in my case, for example, to use uh, um, English. And I always start by teaching them how to be safe online. This is the first thing I do. And I found this website to be quite nice. It's pizkid.co.uk, where it's a very guided website that keeps uh, that tells your students, and uh, from this you can use that from six until eighteen years old, on how to truly be safe online. 
So let's bear this in mind. This, I think this is one of the most important things. If they want to start really working online, they really have to know which are going to be the online safety things that they must know, and also which are the different etiquette rules that they have to know. So this website will obviously show them uh, step by step how to be safe online and how to be polite as well online when you're working with different people from different parts of the world. And this is one of my favorite websites. It's called PurposeGames.com. With PurposeGames.com, you have 2,800 games. So you can plan every single class and activity. Now, these games are educational games. And they're really, really very nice. And why? Because, for example, in this case, I was working on a, new, a unit that it was uh, on uh, parts of the house. And I found this game where, again, we have this idea of visual literacy. They're working, OK, they can see the image, and that they have to relate the word with the image. And something that I also find that is very nice about this website is that instantly they have an answer. They have the results, so they know if they match the images correctly. Now, with 2,800 games, obviously, you can adapt this game to whatever pedagogical purpose you have. You have history, geography, math, OK? Um, as I basically base my learning and teaching, my teaching in, uh, for young learners, you even have the symptoms. Well, you can adapt this, obviously, to uh, your learning needs. Definitely a website that we can start exploring and even playing, even if you have young uh, children at home. This is definitely a website that I would allow, for example, my daughters to work with. And this is also one of my favorite websites. I don't know if you ever heard about this, Friv, okay, friv.com. This is a website, and all these different squares that you see here, they're all different games. Amazingly, I have been using this website for the last year with my students in the classroom. And I realized that, for example, kindergarten, okay, um, I don't even have to teach them how to play the games. As they are the trial and error generation, they automatically know how to, how to play the games. I'm highly surprised. To see, okay, you, 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 your kids use it. It's wonderful. It's very nice. But then later on, we have to think of, okay, how are going to we use, for example, this game with a pedagogical purpose? Okay, later on, what I do, okay, I work together with their teacher because I'm the ICT teacher. I work together with their teacher where they have to explain, okay, the game that they have done, where they have to draw the game, for example, if they're very young, okay, and they have to obviously try to describe okay, the, the instructions on how to play it. So this is a, definitely a game that all your students will fall in love. And somehow, they also they will forget that they're practicing English. So this is definitely what I want to focus on when I am planning my classes. Um, at least here in Argentina, most of our, our English classes are exam-based. And when you bring the games into the classroom, definitely what they love is you know, something new. And when you, you, when you do this, okay, when you bring these games into the classroom, what is very, very important is that they feel that they can take their learning as far as they want. So this is very, very important. Something else that I want to share. How about making our students create their games? This is wonderful. This, is, this website is whattolearn.com. At the beginning, I started using this website because you have already made uh, games that you can use of every single subject that you can use with their learners. But later on, instead of you know creating so many tests, okay, and to correct the test all the time, what I did is okay, I started to use this website to create games to test their uh, learning. This is a very very nice website that you it, it's double folded. You can use it or directly to play the games, or if you want, what you can do you can create it. At least this is what I do to assess my students. Or you can even make them create their own games. And this has given me excellent results. They love this idea of being able to create different games. And then later on, to share their creation with different students. Okay, This is very, very uh, nice. And they feel also very important in the moment that they are sharing and bringing something like this into the classroom. OK, and then one of the last things that I would also like to share with you is how to teach grammar. Grammar is a very important topic here in Argentina, at least what I did in teacher training college is like everybody focused, okay, on teaching grammar and filling the gaps. 
I am a teacher that personally I don't like fill in the gap. I'm not in favor of using fill in the gap and more with this uh, new generation that they don't think linearly, okay? They all think as a hyperlink. So we have to bring into the classroom also this idea of let's allow them to choose what they would like to do, okay? Always based on an, um, an objective that maybe you have. So this is the game that I've been using with my students to teach them prepositions, okay? The boys love this one. It's a very, very simple game. The only thing they have to do, they have to read a sentence and then they have to choose the correct preposition. Um, how do I use it? Is in general, I, make, I divide my students in different groups, maybe on one side the boys and then the girls, and uh, they play a competition. And this is giving me also, once again, excellent results, okay? They forget that they're using really the language and they're learning prepositions, and they focus directly on the game, okay, in trying to, to win the other team. And then I have this other game that I would uh, like to share with all of you, that this is ESL Games World. With ESL Games World, this game, automatically, you already have the game divided in two different teams, okay? And uh, it's, very, it's a very guided game where directly your students, okay, are competing one against each other. If you go to this website, you will find thousands of different games. In this case, I found a very nice game on how to teach prepositions. Maybe it's a little bit elementary because, elementary because it's for uh, young learners, but it's very good. Then what I did is after they played the game, I made them uh, describe and draw all the different prepositions that they learned, and then to share this with the rest of uh, the, the group. Okay, so let's go now on going trying to recap all the different websites that I gave you, because this is also always very, very overwhelming. So let me go back to this idea, okay, the purpose today is to show you some basic skills that we as teachers must have if we're really planning to start integrating technology. So the first thing, and let's go back to this, is, okay, we have to bring into the classroom this idea of the information literacy, okay? We have to become learners, once again, and we have to show them different ways of looking for information. Remember KidRex. Any idea, do any of you remember why should we use KidRex and why it is so important to use KidRex in the classroom? Any idea? Let's see, remember. Exactly, wonderful. Okay, it's Google. It's exactly the same as using Google, but this is for a young learner from 6 to 12. And then we've got Bolify. Remember that Bolify, what it did, it helped you to refine the search, okay, just to help you a little bit to recap a little bit these concepts. Now, to recap the search, it, it meant, okay, what were you able to do? Okay, well, I don't want to look for this information. Maybe I want to look for this other information. And we have to teach our students, and this is something very important even for ourselves, how to use the words and, or, and not when we are doing a search, okay? Then we have Ask Kids. Remember this one of using Ask Kids? Okay, this is from Yahoo. Yes, you can use these games. I have been using, to be honest, I even have been using Friv with business students. So uh, imagine, and they love this idea because it was something so new for them, okay? It was something that really was out of the routine. And once again, my objective when, for example, I brought Friv into the classroom was that I wanted to know if their instructions were clear, okay? And the purpose of that class was definitely he had to give a very specific presentation and had to, his, his uh, instructions had to be very clear. So, yes, yes, you can use them. Uh, and then um, what to learn also, you can use it. You, you can, instead of testing them in the fill in the blanks, you can create a game and they can use this game uh, in the classroom. And then we have, uh, well, Yippee, this one that I told you before, that we have several queries and several questions, okay? And this is all, uh, the search engine is done uh, by topic. And then we had Google Fights. Do you remember this idea of using Google Fights in the classroom, okay? For example, in this case, if they wanted to learn prepositions, it was in the internet or on the internet. Okay, just to recap a little bit, because I know it's a lot of information in such a short period of time. And then we've got Volker Rule for this other idea that's very important for us to know how to use digital audio, okay? We've got Volker Rule. And then we have, uh, for example, um, Mount Yourself, okay? 
and uh, we have uh, uh, talking pets as well that we can we can use with our with our students. Okay, what type of page you can use for speaking? You can use Vocaroo directly for for speaking if if you want, and there absolutely you have no problem. And then for visual um, literacies, you have for example Monoface, that is the one that you have this crazy face. Okay, then we have learning chocolate as well, and then the other one that is based on how to use a Flickr. Uh, where your students were able to choose five different cards, for example. And then using this idea of using games in the classroom, okay, once again, remember that the, our first job as teachers is really to show them how to be safe online. This is the first thing we have to teach them. There are so many wonderful games that we can, uh, you know, if you go to KidRex, for example, if you're working with uh, young learners, and there you can show them, okay, different games that you can use, okay. To improve pronunciation, for example, yes, you can use, well, there's a specific one that you can use for, for um, that it's, it's not here, that it's called um, English Central. It's definitely the best if you want to improve pronunciation. Um, okay, it's very good. And also, if you use learning chocolate, in learning chocolate also you have every single uh, word, okay, you have the, the pronunciation there as well. And then you have, well, uh, five card flicker. Okay, and then we have, well, several different games. It's the one I told you before that it's purpose game, so you can use it. Yes, it's very nice, very nice. Students repeat it all the time. Frib is one that they really, really like. And then we have uh, what to learn as well, and then the two other different games that I uh, showed you before, that one was the, the basketball one, and the other one where you had two different teams that were um, playing a game and to see which was the best one. And to sum up the, the webinar, I truly believe what is a successful teacher nowadays, okay, in the 21st century. And I think that Howard, okay, Ringold is summarizing it very well. It's not about keeping up with technologies. It's about keeping up with literacy. And I truly believe that this is the most important thing. We really have to not all the time bring more and more tools into the classroom. But yes, bring different types of literacies into the classroom because it's really what our students are uh, looking for. And then uh, to sum up, it says, no matter how many mistakes you make or how slow you progress, you are still way ahead of everyone who isn't trying. So my piece of advice is uh, please start trying to integrate these different tools in the classroom. And thank you so much for joining me today. If you want to visit, um, all the things that I've shared today, please go to gemforsurewordpress.com and you will see there all the different links. Thank you so much for joining me.